Hey everybody, how's it going? So, uh, sorry we're out in the uh, shed tonight, so it's a little loud. Uh, the machines are running and crappy mic and no camera, so um, sorry about that, but it is what it is. Um, so this is going to be a little bit of a change here. Uh, we're going to talk about easel <clears throat> and running your CNC. Uh, so this may or, you know, depends on what you're doing. This is going to be sort of a beginner video. So if you're just sort of getting started, if you just picked up maybe a small hobby CNC, something where you're using easel with like a, like the Sane Smart 3018 Pro like I do, um, I use easel because it's really, really easy, makes the process fun. Uh, and once you understand some of the ins and outs of, um, of how the machine works and how the G-code works, uh, you can, you know, it's pretty powerful stuff. It's been around a long time and you can do a lot of cool things with it. So this video in particular is gonna be about how to rehome your X, Y, and Z at the end of a job. So I run some smaller jobs on this uh, 3018, and by default, Eza will rehome to your X and Y, but it will not necessarily rehome your Z. So once you, at the start of a job, uh, or before you start running your job and you set your Z height, um, at the end of easel, it doesn't necessarily uh, rehome all three axes. It'll rehome your X and your Y, but not your Z. And that's in case you want to change a bit. Uh, if you have a second, uh, if you have a roughing pass and then you have a finishing pass and you want to change bits in between, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily going to do uh, a rehome of X, Y, and Z. Uh, but I have a couple of jobs, like a, I, use the, I use the same bit and like I'll run, you know, this piece of, uh, of aluminum or I'll have something where I'll run acrylic. And I might want to run that job twice to either clean up some burrs or some nastiness, or maybe I want to rehome my X, Y, and Z and I want to drop my Z height maybe 100 microns and then rerun the job to get just a slightly deeper cut. So this will be a, a real quick video on how to do that. So I brought in this little Pennywise face. Um, I was doing this um, you know, on a piece of actually round aluminum, a little, little round aluminum blank that I had. I'm using this little half millimeter uh, carving bit uh, that I bought off uh, yeah, eBay or Amazon, I can't remember. Um, but a really good bit for doing, for, for really all purpose bit, but a really, really good so far for doing uh, small stuff in aluminum too. So I've got my shape in here and I set my depth. So my total depth of cut is 0.2 millimeters uh, for everything. Um, and then I've gone over here and I've set up my cut settings. So in this particular, you know, for my feeds and speeds, I'm running 300 millimeters per minute with a 228 plunge. Um, but I'm only doing a 0.1 millimeter pass, um, a depth per pass. So it's going to come in here and drop, you know, 0.1 millimeter and cut everything out. And then it's going to come back and do it again at another 0.1 millimeter to get to my overall 0.2. But I might want to rerun it again, either to clean something up, like I said, or maybe go just slightly deeper if I feel like I need to. So I need to rehome the X, the Y, and the Z. <clears throat> so once you've got your job all set up, I run the offline controller for the 3018. Uh, I don't connect and, and uh, run Gerbil or even connect diesel to it. Uh, I do everything exclusively on the offline controller. Uh, that's just my preference. So when I'm ready to save off my G-code, I go here to machine, I go here to advanced, and I generate my G-code, and then I'll export my G-code. So you can see here it's untitled too because I got a couple other ones in there. But let's take a look real fast at what easel is showing this thing is gonna do. So you can see the start of the G-codes up here. So you're gonna set your Z height at the start of the job or before you start your job, right? You're gonna to touch off your bit to the top of your material and then you run your job, it's gonna raise it up and, and then walk through uh, its code to go do everything and then it's gonna come back and it's gonna rehome to X and Y. So what I like to do, um, and I'm really only showing you NC Viewer just so you kind of have a visual on what, what's happening here. But uh, if you haven't ever used ncviewer.com, it's free, it's web-based, it's great. Um, so you go to ncviewer.com, you open the file that we just saved off from Easel. So again, this is Untitled 2. And why don't we, why don't we talk into some of these real fast. So your G21 is the start of your program. Um, your M3 starts your spindle and the S8750 tells it what RPM to spin your spindle up to. So it's start spindle, go to 8750 RPMs. Um, then we've got our G90, and then as you step through the start of the G-code, 
you can see, right, it's, there you go, you're at, you're at your X, your Y, and your Z, you're at your zeroed at that point. Now it's moving up, now it's moving over, now it's going down, and now we can step through the G code and you can see that it starts carving, right? And it goes round and round and round, yada, yada, yada. And I'll do this all twice, like I said. Now when we get back down to the bottom of the G code, you can see here we got our last move, right? There's G21, that's, that's saying I'm done. I'm finished executing all of the spindle moves to do carving. And we've got our G90, and then we've got our raise up, basically five millimeters, right? Our safety, our safety height. Um, it's rehoming X and Y only, right? No Z here. Uh, I'm honestly not sure what the G4PO1 is. And then M5 turns off your spindle. So I noticed a problem that when my M5 is at the very last line of my G code, uh, it was not turning off my spindle. I didn't like that, it's a safety hazard. Um, I didn't want to inadvertently have loud music playing and get to the end of the job or so, do something stupid like reach my hand in there when the spindle is still rolling. Um, so there's a couple things you can do and you can either make the changes right here or I'll show you in the file how to change them too. But first thing I want to do is move my M5 up. So I'm going to get rid of M5 here at the bottom. And after this last move, I'm going to put in a return there and I'm going to do an M and a 5. So now after I'm at this last move and the spindle, uh, the head moves up, the spindle moves up, now my spindle turns off, okay? And now I'm traveling to my X and my Y. So now this is the point where I wanna home my Z also. So I just put in a space right behind here and say Z 0 0.000. So now if we come back through and we step through this, Let's uh, plot this. Plot. So now as we step through, bang. So you can see now I'm touched down on all three axes, back right exactly where I started. Um, and then I can rerun the job like I said, or I can manually lower my bit another 100 microns if I need to, or 50 microns, whatever, to, um, to get just a little uh, a cleanup, cleanup pass with the same bit if I want to. So now if you want to save this off, all you have to do is hit save. It'll save it back down into the same folder. Then you can rename it, send it back off to your controller, whatever controller you're using, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and so there's, there you go. So there's a tiny, tiny, tiny education uh, on some of the rudimentary codes and how to rehome your extra Y and your Z. It may not be of use to you in every single job, like I said, there may be some jobs where it is useful to you. So anyway, I hope it's helpful. Um, and I'll have some other videos uh, pretty soon. So thanks a lot.